I'm going to try to call Jeff now. If my Skype will function. Hey, what's up? Hey, Jeff, do you hear me? Yes, I can. Victory. All right, man. Well, that was uh, slightly annoying, but not a big deal. How are you? Doing well, man. How are you? I am great. I have to thank you for the uh, little plug you gave us on State of the Game uh, last of week. Of course. You are the man. Well, thank you. I think you're the man. That's why I gave the plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, Jeff, it's been a while since we've talked. Uh, how have you mm -hmm. been? I know you just got back from PAX. Did that go well? Oh, yeah. PAX is amazing. It's the first time I've ever done something like that, and I uh, can't wait to go again. Fortunately, PAX Prime's not for many, many months. Hey, it's okay. We've got some big stuff yeah. coming up here at the uh, beginning of April, right? Yeah, MLG, NASL, it's all going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, totally stoked. All right, dude. Well, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, ZVP today. I feel like uh, hey, that's kind of what we talk about most when uh, when okay. you're on the stream, but uh, it makes sense because I hear you play a pretty good Protoss. <laughs> I try. Um, and if you if you would just reminisce with me for a second, like if you go back all the way to when we first started doing this thing, mm -hmm. we talked about Stargate plays in ZVP. And... Uh, and it was cool, and it was fun, and it was informative, but it was also fun. happening right as uh, you know the the Phoenix build time had just been patched. Yeah. And uh, I feel like it's really taken all these weeks for uh, for the I guess the, for the meta game to finally sort of shift, and now we're starting to see a lot more Stargate stuff, uh, completely disregarding Void Ray Colossus, which is something that gets talked about to death everywhere else. What I really want to talk about today. Uh, is the growing prevalence of things like uh, fast expand into like two star or three star phoenix? Two or three star phoenix. Wow, who's doing that? Who's doing that? It's it's, it's happening all over the place. Uh, I feel like hmm. uh, Idra got beat by it at IEM, didn't he? Was it that many stargates? I thought he just had the one. Um, I you know what? I, saw I only saw he do it a couple times. I mean, I know he did it more than that, so maybe I just missed him. But I don't want to. I don't want to misspeak. But even if it's even if it's just one Stargate with Chrono boosted Phoenixes, uh, we're 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 dealing with uh, you know a fast expansion that's hard to punish, and a Protoss player who's pumping out a lot of Phoenixes, which give map control, which scout, which harass, and they they do all this stuff, and there's just a lot of uh, difficulties involved with coping with it. So I wanted to pick your brain for a second and first figure out what is the Protoss player's mindset when they're doing that? Well, there's a couple styles. There is the style where they um, they show you the Phoenix after even just like two of them. They're not really trying to do a revealed attack. What they're actually trying to do is... Let me see. People are complaining about audio. Let me just make sure. Oops. I hear you just fine. Yeah, actually, I'm listening to your stream. It sounds just fine, so it must be from person to person. Um, but anyways, there's that style where they're just trying to disrupt you from your build. So obviously, a person freaks out. And they're like, oh, my God, i got to make spore colonies and hydralis and multiple queens, and I need to they just kind of freak out about it. Um, and that's a strong style because what they can do from there is they can keep adding Phoenix if they're getting success, or they can cut it off at, like, three or four. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's not much of a commitment at all. Mm -hmm. um, or there's the style where they show up, and bam, there's five Phoenix at your front door. And both those styles, uh, you know, put the Zerg in a hard spot. They both have to be like, okay, Evolution Chamber, boom, boom. Um, Spore Colony at each mineral line, at least one, boom, boom. And then probably a third, if not a fourth, queen. Mm -hmm. um, and th that's a pretty, you know, that's a heavy output of resource, especially when it's at their time, not at yours. Right. Which gives a lot of the control of the Protoss, so that makes it very difficult. Um, but, of course, one of the big things about this is there are indicators leading up to it that a lot of Zergs don't respect. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's not easy to go Stargate, Phoenix, Phoenix, and, and and still maintain three or four centuries of pylon. It looks like an Anexus is coming down. It, it, it should feel and look strange to a Zerg player that's doing their job trying to find out information. So right. if they're running up and down the ramp, if they have overlords around the perimeter of the base, if they're in position of Sakanovi, that kind of stuff, they should be in place to be able to find out for themselves what's going on. Now, of course, there's extenuating circumstances, like say it's cross-map positions on one of these giant new maps, um, or they put it in a really clever spot that you just simply don't get to in time. Things do happen, and that's really, really tough. Um, so does that mean that Zergs from now on just kind of blanket Spore Colony or have a third or fourth queen? No, absolutely not. Um, at least not at this current stage, because it's not 
it, it's certainly more common, but it's not like it's the most common thing. I think three gate expand is still the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the one base timings like four gate and that kind of stuff is second, but this is a, probably a third up there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just kind of scouting, making the read, and then uh, react reacting without overreacting is the best way to mitigate this this opening. Okay, well uh, let's talk about what happens once the phoenixes are out on the map. So th he's got them out. We have it. We maybe we've taken a little bit of damage, but we're not dead. Um, what uh, what do, what needs to change in the zerg players uh, in the zerg players I guess mindset? Uh, he's got five to ten phoenixes out. Uh, does that affect the, our unit composition? Does that affect the way that we time our expansions? Is it, I mean, obviously, with phoenixes roaming around the map, I can't uh, I can't send overlords out everywhere. Right. Well, that's the strength of it. It's super hard. Um, it is able to just kind of withdraw information from the map for the zerg, which is like one of the things they rely on the most to be competitive. So, overlords, zerglings on towers, zerglings in front of their base. All those things fall by the wayside, but the hidden killers that people aren't necessarily aware of is that they also stop spreading creep because they're so worried about all these other things. Right. So now their units are less mobile. Mm -hmm. um, their bases look a heck of a lot more cluttered because they are consolidating things around the spore colonies. They have multiple queens. They basically fall on their back foot and become defensive. And the Protoss has like a new form of shark mode, if you will, but really it's just them using these super fast units that are built for harass, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, Part of the reason I don't do Phoenix very often, and I, I'm not necessarily against them, I've definitely seen people use them and they just look ridiculously yeah. powerful. Optic Zero has um, some sick Phoenix play. Yeah, I mean, you you even quoted, I mean, Ace against Idra looks silly. It like, just looked like Idra didn't belong in the game. And Idra's one of the best Zergs on the planet, so yeah. that's, that's telling of how powerful it can be. Um, but I'll tell you, as a Protoss player, and, and just to get in the mindset of them, Phoenixes aren't cheap. They're not expensive. No one's going to be like, wow, they're just ridiculously overpriced. Nobody's going to say that. Um, but they are they are not cheap, and there is a soft kind of timing window. Um, if you've opened up roaches with burrow roaches, you should kind of maintain that, that uh, composition. Start heading towards hydras, but honestly, you almost kind of forget about the, uh, the phoenix. You almost just ignore it, because when they pick up a roach, they actually do diddly squat damage to it. So there is kind of a soft timing window as long as you've maintained your creep spread. You have burrow roach with speed, and you have speed lings. There is a period of time where they're expanding, they're on low unit count, they don't have a lot of sentries, and they might be heading towards Robo. Yeah, um, how delayed is the Robo going to be? Well, that's the tough part, because actually, again, if we want to quote the, uh, the Ace game, he actually delayed it tremendously, yeah. but the reason he did that was because he made a lot of units. Yeah. And then against that Protoss, that would be super, super freaking hard. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's the standard. I think the normal one is they, they use their Phoenix almost like vultures were used in, in TVP and Brood War, yeah. while the tanks are the Colossus. So they're just sitting at home, slowly getting to Colossus, relying just... on you overreacting to the Phoenix to keep you away from their home. All right. So you got to kind of feel it out. Send a Zergling towards their base. If there's not a lot of units there, they're starting to kind of skimp expand, and they're just adding more and more Phoenix. As long as you have 20, 25, you know, plus roaches and whatever lings you can add in there, they're simply not going to have enough Phoenix uh, graviton beams to pick them up and kill them. Cool. And if you crack a Protoss, that's it. You know, again, those Phoenix run out of energy, and all of a sudden they're up there tw twiddling their thumbs. Now, of course, that doesn't answer a question, what if they do do the Ace style, which seems to be better? Um, against that, my opinion is you just have to kind of slowly tech the Hydras, sit on four or five Queens, and macro, it just you, you kind of do have to fall on that back foot. So do the best you can to take a third and probably a fourth pretty quick because they don't have a lot of attack power for a while. I mean, okay. yes, they are making gateway units, and yes, they are perhaps looking to be aggressive, but, again, it's the same problem with those roaches. The roaches should be dominant. They should not have observers. Um, as long as you have burrow, you should be able to do that. And uh, as long as you can get some hydras and get the queens focusing down on those, those phoenix, you should be okay. It's hard. I'm not going to try to be like, oh, here's what you do, and it's totally easy. Nope, it's very difficult, but it certainly is doable. Okay, cool. Well, I've got a guy that's going to play this kind of style, uh, ready to rock and roll. So if you want to just come on in here, um, we'll fire this bad boy up whenever you're ready. I'll make you ref. And I'll make a Fantax, another one of my students. Quanda is the former. Dude. All right, man. Uh, and I guess my last question as we're starting this game. Is uh is going to be kind of a quanda related uh, current okay. take, current take on the Ling Baneling style that he's sort of popularized. 
Well, uh, you know, I I faced it for a day, and I had no idea what the hell this was, and it, some, uh, you know, skilled but random guy crushed me <laughs> two or three that times. Guy, that guy sent me a message afterwards, like, oh my god, I just beat in control with Wakanda's build. <laughs> Le- yeah, <laughs> legitimately. You know, I, I have no complaints. There's no cheese or anything. Just very, very different, so... Uh, I was baffled and I was upset because we're not that far from WCG, so I spent or not WCG, MLG, MLG so I yeah. spent the day uh, with Aquanda and several other guys who have faced it. J Mag, who's you know everyone's favorite here, Fuck J. Mag. and uh, just kidding. worked I love through J. Mag. it. <laughs> and and it's it's solvable. It's definitely I don't think it has the longevity to be the new ZVP, but what I do like about it, and I guess I'll get to this in a second. I'll I'll get to that in a second. It's kind of cutting it short, but. You just have to sim city toss. You have to play very turtling. You have to play even more turtling. Um, the better Protosses will find the balance where they still will do a quote unquote shark mode. Of course, it's much more reduced. But if you can force those lings out earlier and trap them even as they get yep. a little bit over anxious, um, it really cuts the balls off of that build because yes, it's a lot of lings and yes, they're teching very slowly, so they're able to do that e- more easily. But if they have to make even more lings than they want to and they're teching even slower than they want to, then all of a sudden those colossus are out when the inlings are still just trudging around, you know, and then it's just GG there. But uh, what I do like about that build that I think has made this game infinitely more interesting and, and just goes to show how, how great of a game it is, is that it's given Zerg's confidence to be more aggressive. I mean, yep. it used to be that the Idra machine ret style was, well, we don't attack for the first 20 minutes. We sit on our half the map and just macro. But I am constantly getting more games where there's Hydra showing up at early weird times, mm-hmm. there's roaches running around with tunneling claws at weird times, there's massive numbers of lings countering to bases, which is something that you've heard me preach about for a oh, yeah. long time. Um, and I think Zergs are hopefully getting kind of new sense of confidence. Now, of course, they run up against the, you know, run-of-the-mill six gator and they get stomped and then they hate the game even more. But <laughs> against a guy who's trying to play pretty standard like myself, um, they have a lot more success than they used to. So it's I think it's exciting because even for me, I'm having to incorporate hallucination. I'm having to mix in different builds. I can't just do three gate expand every game anymore. I have to, you know, I have to change things up. So it's it's a fun time in StarCraft 2 right now. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like some timings are starting to develop where Zerg can kind of punish Protoss a little more. Yes. Uh, which is good. But um uh oh. Forge. So do I want to try and delay this Nexus, obviously? Yeah. Um, some people even do things like, if you can get them out of the way, you could build a hatchery, cancel it, and then build a evolution chamber. Yeah. Force some cannons. A little bit harder with two of these probes here. Yeah. Especially since it's chasing you down. And don't lose the drone. It's very important to see what kind of Nexus this is. Okay, so the Nexus is down. You delayed it a little bit. That's fine. Maybe get up in his base. Um... I would probably steal the gas. It's very cheap for you, and it can throw the build off just ever so slight. Not yet. Would not do it just yet. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, this is why it's important to scout the drone, though. So you saw I took double gas. Yep. And that's that's a, that's unique. You know, that's strange. Okay, so... Should not... I mean, I don't know. If I, if I were coaching him, I would say probably don't want to put six drone, or six probes on gas just yet. And make sure this probe gets back in the base, and then block out the outside of his base. Now, I, I feel terribly, tremendously behind right here. His nexus is yep. going to be done. Um, I'd take a fast third hatch. Okay, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards myself. Cross map positions, I wouldn't get on the gas for a while. You've got metabolic speed upgrade coming. You know he's got nothing coming out for a while. Just get a couple creep tumors down so that you can connect these, uh, these two bases. Because the biggest danger of taking a fast third hatch like that is that he goes Stargate, gets a Void Ray out, and there's nothing you can do. Yeah. It just gets cancelled, essentially. So keep that drone alive. That is important. You want to see what's going down in there? Cybercore. And then just drone super, super hard. And it's going to feel weird, but I think one of the biggest mistakes servers make is that they take this, first, uh, this fast third hatch, and then they also try to tech at the same time, which right. doesn't make sense because the normal build, you know, I mean, think about putting out a macro hatch and then just still trying to do the no, roasting. No. Don't let that pro go. There you go. Good. Yeah, one thing that's really inspired me at Stargate uh, lately is the prevalence of uh, Zerg players who are just.